Back here with Chris Kenny. We're going viral. Ravens showed up to their wild card matchup against the Chargers in Halloween masks. But L.A. wasn't scared, handing Baltimore the loss on the field. See what I did there? Off the field, trolling them <laughs> with the crying Jordan treatment. Wow. From the official team account. Savage. No Savage. Now, those are defensive linemen, right? Those defensive yeah. players. All defensive guys, you can't come to the stadium with a mask on. Well, well T.Y. Hilton Well, no, yeah. that's because someone said that, that's clown. clown. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he, he did that in response. Yes. Yeah, well, the joke was on people. Jonathan Joseph, well, as we no found out. Yeah. There's just no doubt about yeah. that. That's a defensive maneuver right there. Yeah. That's a defensive maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> right? The shape. Chris, I, I listen, for all my time I've known Chris, Chris has no prejudices or biases that I can tell. Except, except for against defensive football and, players and, and NBA players being soft. These are your, the two stereotypes you buy into. <laughs> you know, I don't buy into any well, racial. Just my or, history or, tells me that. <laughs> right. History tells me guys in the NBA, not this generation of players, are not physical and definitely don't want to fight. And I spent 16 years in NFL locker room, more years covering it. Man, it's a bunch of dumb dudes. Come on, CC. <laughs> come the on, CC. Come on, CC. I'm here to do the show with you. Did you realize he's sitting right next to you? I got Hall of Famers texting me all the time. Right next to you. Yeah, I. He don't care about yeah, my He's not one of them. I mean, I'm no fool. <laughs> he's too big for me to call him dumb dumb up in his face. But when he leaves, though. Well, exactly. He's from Virginia, man. He's a smart one. He's a smart one. He brings the GPA up on the defensive side. <laughs> oh, All right. Next segment, we'll hear what you really think about kickers. Uh, back to the Cowboys and Seahawks. Here we go in this one. Dallas down four in the fourth quarter. Let's get it going, Dak Prescott. Nice pass to Amari Cooper. 34-yard gain for Dak. His longest pass of the day. Four plays later, Ezekiel Elliott runs in the one-yard score. Dallas up three. Fast forward, less than three minutes to go. Third and 14, probably the biggest play for Dak right here. Runs for the first down all the way to the one-yard line, making the winning plays for his football team. Next play, he runs it in for the score. He is fired up. Cowboys are fired up. Jerry Jones is fired up. Cowboys pull out the win 24-22 over the Seahawks. Here's Dak Prescott after his first playoff win. This team, everything we've been through, uh, we had so much confidence coming to the game, and our confidence remains. I mean, we just played a great, great Seattle team. Uh, but just, it's Hello. just, uh, hey. <laughs> I mean, just honestly, it's just all about the way we fall, the way we, we compete, compete through success and adversity. Proud of our guys. Can we talk about the way this guy fought on third down, running it for 16 yards to get the first down and then set up the touchdown? I mean, what were you thinking when you saw him take off? Uh, it's simple. You're a grown man. That's what it is. Uh, that, that's how he played today, and he, he led us to this win. All right, so we've established they are adults that yeah. play. That's uh, that's what he meant to say. I'll just translate for him there. All right, Chris Kenny, what do you think was the, the key in this one? How did the Cowboys beat Seattle? Well, it ain't complicated, Jenna. It starts with the run game, and that's both sides of the ball. I mean, defensively, the Dallas Cowboys defensive line did a good job of playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Those guys up front, Demarcus Lawrence, Malik Collins, Tyrone Crawford, Antoine mm -hmm. Woods, all, the, all of those guys had tackle for losses. So that tells you that those guys did a good job of disrupting the timing of the run game. A lot of stop and start by Chris Carson in the backfield, and it's hard to get the running game going. I think they finished with 70 yards rushing on the season. They were averaging 160. So if you could slow that Seattle Seahawks offense down by stopping the run, I think that, that bodes well for you defensively in terms of trying to contain them and mm -hmm. limit scoring opportunities. Offensively, you saw what Ezekiel Elliott did by halftime. 17 touches for 123 yards from scrimmage. I mean, they were running the offense through Ezekiel Elliott. And when it became winning time in the fourth quarter, we saw Dak Prescott step up and make some plays, particularly in the red zone. He had two critical runs in the red zone to set up those touchdowns. Of course, we know the one at the end of the game was aided by the two penalties to keep that drive going. You had a DPI by K.J. Wright, yeah. and you had a DPI by Coleman, mm -hmm. and that allowed them to continue to move the sticks. And then, you know what? When they got into the scoring area, Dak Prescott was aggressive. He took advantage of the opportunity when it presented itself on that third and 14. And ultimately, when your quarterback is making those types of plays, and then your offensive and defensive lines are dominating the way the Cowboys did, you're going to have a good chance to win a playoff game. And two of these four games were won, uh, not just because of the running game, but a small little point. 
Tavon Austin flipped the field a couple times. Those 74 yards that he had as a returner in the Baltimore um, game. And he had against, one taken away. Yeah, a yeah, touchdown yeah, could have really yeah. changed that. Yeah, so in these games that defenses were dominant, not like the beginning of the, the first for a few months of the NFL, we could see special teams, Tavon Austin, those extra yards to create that field position that Dallas could play. This connected game where they could depend on their special teams. They could depend on their defense. And when it was late, they they could depend on their quarterback. And I just like the fact that everyone is not going to be a Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees type quarterback. And I just have a great deal of respect for those quarterbacks who aren't those guys, but they develop a style for which they can win games. Ben Roethlisberger has done it at a high level. He's a totally different quarterback. He came into the league very one-dimensional. You couldn't depend on him. You had to play strong defense around him. He had a limited passing game. Now he's grown into, grown into one of the most prolific passers that we have. Dak Prescott, man, be who you're supposed to be and in the biggest moments third down fourth quarter that's when you could see him running the football so Scott Lanahan's buy-in Jason Garrett in designing these quarterback runs that I thought third and 14 here this is not a third and 14 play but halfway through this they had it blocked perfectly Dak Prescott made up his grand mind to put his cleats in the ground and not just protect the football but I'm gonna be aggressive and try to go get this first down which led to a touchdown so for me those were the differences in this game late because what am I expecting I'm expecting Russell Wilson to make some kind of play with his arm or legs who makes this play Dak Prescott makes it and I believe that was the biggest play not only of the weekend but the biggest play of his career a biggest play of his career and I said earlier I'll say it again it's the biggest play a Dallas Cowboy has made since Larry Brown intercepted Neil O'Donnell in late in the fourth quarter of Super Bowl 30 like they, they they they've only had a couple other playoff wins you could argue mm -hmm. the Romo had a touchdown pass Terrence Williams in their most recent playoff win but this was the biggest play and can we show it again because look at who Dak runs through that's the best middle linebacker in the NFL that's Bobby Wagner mm -hmm. a guy who is on a Hall of Fame track just made first team all pro again a guy who in his career in Seattle misses less than one percent of his tackles and I don't know if this counts as a missed tackle, but it's close. And if, if, if Dak gets tackled there, if Wagner makes that play, mm -hmm. they are kicking a field goal, 100%. They're not going for it there. They're kicking a field goal, and now we're thinking it's Russell Wilson time. It's down six, even without the kicker, like whatever it is, down six with the ball outside of two minutes. Seattle had one timeout. Okay, let's go see what we can do. And that play by Dak changed the trajectory of the game and maybe changed the trajectory of this NFL season. And as an NFL player, th there are plays that happen and they don't happen in real time for you. They happen in slow motion. Mm -hmm. And you have to make up your mind in that fraction of a second that I'm getting ready to make the more dangerous of these plays. And that's what Dak was able to do. Canty, you're agreeing with it because as a defensive player, there are certain times you have certain stunts and you see something and you believe it and you have to make that call. And that to me was a Dak who had made up his mind compared to some other times where he didn't run with that type of fervor that we saw him finish off that run with. No, you're absolutely right, CC. It's a certain mentality that you're talking about and I'll take it a step further sometimes it's not in the game sometimes you make up your mind to do that in the preparation in the week leading up okay and you're yes. thinking about it and mm -hmm. you're saying you know what it's if gonna the, be one if the situation pre presents itself I am going to react this way and that's how you practice that's how you prepare when you're going through your film study so when you have those show up you're prepared to execute in those moments especially when you're talking about postseason football because it's a different brand of football it's more physical it's more intense and it was clear to me that Dak Prescott, unlike the other young quarterbacks that we saw this uh, this mm. weekend, was prepared to make those plays and had the confidence to be able to do so. And that takes you back to what happened in Week 17 with the Dallas Cowboys and Jason Garrett's decision to play Dak Prescott. Great, that, point. that's the dividend, right? Okay, that's exactly why Jason Garrett. I made didn't the decision think of that. <laughs> to have him in that game when he sat Ezekiel Elliott. Both of those moves and that was paid a risk off for by Jason, Jason Garrett, Garrett. because was. if Dak plays poorly in that game with, without his All Pro. 
Pro offensive line with Dallas All-Pro running back. He's going into these playoffs as low as you can confidence-wise. Instead, he came in off his best game of the season. Quickly, one note on why this win, the way they won it, was so important. Everything they did, I think they feel, is duplicable next week. Mm. Because they didn't get outlier performances. Yeah, Zeke was great. He's the best player on their team and the best running back, yeah. true runner of football in the NFL. Amari. He's the guy who had 100 yards receiving, not Blake Jarwin, not yes. Cole Beasley. Right. Dak didn't th didn't make a, where he's threading the needle. No, Dak did enough. And they've been 25-1 and one in Dak's career when he doesn't turn the ball over. He did turn the ball over, and they won despite that, and the defense was spectacular. All those things, you look at, okay, we won a game being exactly who we are. That gives you enormous confidence when you're now going to be an underdog next week on the road. All right, and they will face the Rams. Chris, stick around. Coming up, the yeah, Nick okay, Foles no magic Thanks rolls on. Back. That's next on First Things First. Say it again. <laughs> He's saying he was acting like you were talking to him. You said Chris, Chris. stick around. Because there's oh. two Chris's. Two, two Chris's on It would be like if we had two Jennas. No, no, but I, that would confuse you would, so much. I'm already confused.